Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I was inspired by this piece of paper I had. It was just a scrap piece I had hanging around. And all it had was on just uh, some paint. It didn't have a lot of color, but it was um, like a, the first pull from a stencil, which I'll show in a minute, it'll make more sense. And then I had bought these um, Halloween mica distress sprays from um, my local scrapbook store. And I thought, I'm not quite ready to get Halloween yet, but I'm gonna do just a few papers and just kind of explore this resist technique a little bit more. It'll make more sense as we go. So I pulled out a few stencils that gave me sort of a Halloween vibe. Uh, this one here is from PM Artist Studios. And I'm using my 8x10 jelly plate. Um, don't mind the yellowness of it. That's just from using different inks, uh, especially alcohol inks on the plate. Um, but it doesn't affect how the plate will flunk. Here is some other stencils I thought I would use. This is a PM Artist Studio stencil too. This is, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Might be Stampin' Up. This is a mid-century modern uh, stencil. It's a cat, and that is from iStencils. And I thought this would be kind of cool. It is a um, old scripting Finnebear. It's Finnebear. I don't know the name of it, but I thought that might be kind of cool as a resist. If, if we can get those little details, that might be too fine. So we'll save that for the end, I think. But the first step is to put um, something over your stencil. Actually, let's do under and over. So I'm just gonna take that off for a second and I'm gonna put just a light colored, um, you know what, let's do an orange, um, orange flash. Cause I think that might look cool in contrast to the purple and the green. And I, this is not a technique I've invented. I'm sure, I think I might've seen Bridget Coopson do something similar um, using matte medium. And I might throw a bit of matte medium in there as well. So we're just gonna spread this on, just a very light layer. I don't want a lot of color in the, the first um, layer. And then we're gonna put that on there. And I'm gonna pick it up. This is just some uh, Canson mixed media paper. Um, I often use a large sheet like this when I'm doing my Halloween journal and I'll fold it kind of like that so I have different sizes. I could have brought that over this way a bit, but whatever, we'll see. So there's our first print. I think that's pretty cool. And what we could even do is, if this is still wet, we could pick it up on the other side. And I'm just gonna use this paper bag for part of my pickup prints. Um, it might get incorporated eventually in my Halloween journal, we'll see. And then once that dries, we're gonna use some sprays over top of it. You can probably barely see that. Now, you don't need a jelly plate to do this. Obviously, you could just use um, stencils uh, and then put the paint on top. However, you won't get, the advantage of using the jelly plate really is you get the two different, you get the negative and you get the positive. So I think that's gonna be pretty cool. What I could have done too, is I could have used this edge here. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and spray it. So I have this one, I'm gonna bring my spray box, which is actually just a pizza box. In an attempt to keep my desk somewhat free of sprays. So you gotta shake them really well, get that mica. See, there's the mica there. They recommend storing on the side. And then you give it a good shake. And then I'm just gonna spray a little bit. And before I wipe the nozzle, I'm just gonna do a bunch of different ones. I should shake them both at, first, at the same time. You hear the little ball rattling around? All right, and then this is 
the purple. And then we're gonna we're gonna blot that a little bit so it won't be quite as in your face. Here's a bit of that. It's um called decay. It's kind of like a bone color, which also helps to tone things down. Let's go back to our green and let's do our purple. Let's do a bit more green down here so that's um not green on one side and let's do our decay one more time I'm just gonna use a baby wipe and I'm gonna pounce and then that's when we'll see that orange color come through and then you can even spray it with a bit of water and this is where the uh, mixed media paper comes in nicely because it is quite thick. You can stand up to all this water. And like I said, you don't need a jelly plate to do this. And again, I did not invent this. I just wanted to play. If you've seen this already and you've uh, done it already, awesome. If you have any tips for me, just put them in the comments. I would, you know, I appreciate feedback, especially uh, constructive feedback. All right, so that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna pull this up. So you can see where the orange resisted the spray. This side's a little bit more subtle. So that's going to be a background in my Halloween journal. And I could, you know, I could continue to spray like here. Maybe I'd add a bit more purple because I think that helps bring out the orange a bit more. We'll see if it does or not. It just feels like the, yeah. All right, there's page one. Let's try this one. Um, I'm gonna try to have this one not be so shiny to see if it makes a difference. This is the Indigo, indigo um, Fluid High Flow Acrylic. Ooh, that kind of really splurted out there. And I'm just keeping these all simple because I'm just experimenting and playing and I keep my matte medium in this um, dish soap bottle. Um, that's a trick. Oh, that's way too much. I got from Dee Dee Willingham. And that's like way too much matte medium, but that's okay. We'll just kind of. So this is going to be a very light color. And let's just kind of lightly roll that. So this is very liquidy because we have the matte medium, which is very liquidy, and we have the um, high flow, which is quite liquidy as well. All right, so I'm just going to put that in the middle. And let's get another piece of this. want to get in all those little spaces which um, this thicker paper isn't ideal for that really a uh, tracing paper would be better or onion skin or tissue but um, I want to try to use this in my journal so I do want to try with something a bit thicker we'll see if that works So that worked pretty well. It's a bit darker than I envisioned, but we'll see how that turns up. You can see the orange, leftover orange is there. It looks more of a brownish. Ooh, that's cool.
cool. This one here. Maybe gold would be cool. And then the, the spray around it. Now, this is going to be backwards. I'm gonna do that. So maybe I should turn it around if we want the print to be kind of legible. I almost forgot about that. All right, so I'm gonna concentrate mostly on putting the gold just in the middle of the stencil. And you need quite a bit to get into those little into those little grooves. And I do want to pull it right away. Hopefully I'm getting enough in there. Oh, yeah. Well, we got some of our words. We'll get the idea. All right, where did my paper go? All right, and this I'm going to put down. And I just got my new acrylic block, so I'm going to try to see. We're lining things up. So I definitely had enough uh, gold at the bottom, but I should have used more to get it into those little grooves. But it's going to look distressed, so that's fine. And I got gold all over my hands. So I'm just going to turn that over. Rub, rub, rub. And I'm going to bring this here for a second. that see if we can get any of that paint from that stencil off yeah, a little bit a little bit of grunginess there get this and there we go so that's kind of cool so we're gonna spray that in a minute Frosted juniper. And maybe a bit more of the decayed. And before I blot that, I'm just going to wipe all the little noses of the sprays and put their lids on. It starts to get muddy. Get a fresh one. If I do this, if it yeah, I don't know. I like this smudgy. See how that design's really coming up now? That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Remember, this one had the blue outline. This was um, the outer part of the stencil. And you have to remember, this is the spray is water soluble. So keep that in mind if you're using it um, in something. I'm just going to be using it as a background. For collage so i'm gonna just when i glue i'll have to not use matte medium over top because that'll just spread it and you can let i'm just let that dry little wet pieces maybe i'll add a few up here and let it just a bit of that blue like that and maybe the bit of the frayed have some little drips. Do a little bit of purple. A little bit more green down here. Oops, it's not too much. Okay, so we'll let that dry. We'll look at that again in a minute. So I wonder with the paper bag how it's gonna gonna look because I'm gonna get this. I'm not gonna use blue because that won't be any contrast. Let's use green and purple. Okay so those are well shook. Let's do that. Frayed 
uh, I keep calling it frayed, decayed. Although it's gonna be very similar to the um, color of the paper bag, so I don't know. I think we'll add a little bit more purple. And if you feel it's a waste to throw these baby wipes out, you can use them. I'm just gonna spread some of that purple. This might not make it into my Halloween journal, but I think it's kind of cool on its own. Oh, this one I didn't spray. I could give that a spray. Try this red. And you can do this with you know, any spray, like I use the Distress Spray with the Mica, just um, just for fun. Actually, this red's kind of um, giving me some Halloween vibes. Let's add a bit more of that. Maybe this will make it into the Halloween journal. I like the, the mica is very bright on that. It's like almost an orange. Just wiping it to show that stencil pattern a little bit more. Here we go. All right. I don't know if you can see how bright that is in the light. So with that one, we're gonna let that dry. So here's the pages finished up. So this is the first one we did. And this is uh, the second one we did with the more the blue paint undertone and the gold paint here so that mica gives it that extra shimmer lots of fun and then this is the one on the paper bag this one's nah didn't work out as well as i thought um so yeah with the cat stencil we also did a couple i used the metallic white paint as the base and pulled it with um, just this onion skin paper and then added the sprays, uh, the blue, and I did use some of the blue and the red from the Christmas set. And this is on um, picking up the leftover from the stencil on the uh, black deli paper and then adding sprays on top. And then I did do that tree one so there's the, you know, through the stencil and then what the stencil left behind and then just adding the sprays over top. So those are going to be some backgrounds for my um, Halloween journal. I also, as a bonus, um, I did save some of the baby wipes. So you can use those in your journals as well. So that one's kind of cool. And you can see where it's really thick, you can see a little bit of shimmer from that mica spray, but I liked how it bled, um, bled out on those two, like the edges, the brown and the green. So yeah, so that's, you know, not a new technique. Maybe a reminder of something you already knew about and want to try again. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.